Hey church, welcome to another edition of Digging Deeper. Pastor Kyle and Pastor Nigel here. Uh, we are awake and we're, Mostly. On, and we're on film. <laughs> and that's so we better be. That's a good thing. <laughs> so yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, we uh, so this last Sunday, one of our elders, Mark Tatum, hey Mark, uh, preached Way to go, Mark. preached on Sunday. Yep, great. And uh, gave us some practical things. We're right in the middle of, I guess maybe on the tail end of our series, What Are We Doing Here? Uh, and Mark was speaking on the second of our kind of purpose, uh, our little segments of purpose there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so, of course, we, what are we doing here? We are a church that loves God, loves people, and is passionate about sharing the gospel. And loving people is what the focus was on. And so, like I said, Mark kind of gave us uh, some practical things, some, uh, some easy things to maybe wrap our heads around, but not necessarily easy to do. Ooh. Uh, not necessarily easy. Not because God made them complicated, but because... Our flesh has made them Gets complicated. Gets in the way. Yeah. Our flesh does not want to do those things. <laughs> uh, and so that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. That's what we're going to kind of walk through. And, and so the first kind of question or thought we want to, to get to is, so if this is our purpose, if this is what we're here to do, we, we are a community that loves God, loves people, and is passionate about sharing the gospel, how does that inform or shape the way we do church? Uh, because a lot of times we think of church, we think of Sunday morning. That's, that's, that's church. the center for, that's for a is. lot of people. It's, that's what church is. Yeah. It, it's, it's tied up in that one event. We come to Sunday service, and that's, that's what church is. Yeah. Now, there's, there's some reasons for that. Sure. And the, the service is central to it's part of church. what we're doing, right? Yeah. There's a whole lot that connects with loving God in the service. We are praying to Him. We are singing worship to him we are gathering in his name we're hearing his word all of these things are excellent good stuff but when we think of loving one another and we think of the church service it's a little different obviously we do love each other by being there singing songs is encouraging to one another yeah. and we're encouraged in scripture not just encouraged but commanded to mm -hmm. sing songs to one another and so there's that but there's a whole lot more that the new testament commands us to do that maybe doesn't fit exactly in the way that we're doing a service. And so I'm going to list off here some of the one another's. If you have been around, sometimes you, you may have heard the, the one another's that are in Scripture. There's something like 59 different phrases that yeah. have that phrase in one another in the New Testament. Yeah. So here's some of them. Be devoted <laughs> to one another in brotherly love, Romans Romans 12.10. Serve one another, Galatians 5.13. Carry each other's burdens. Galatians 6, 2. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Ephesians 4, 2. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Ephesians 4, 32. Forgiving each other. Ephesians 4, 32 again. Encourage each other. 1 Thessalonians 4, 8. Confess your sins to each other. James 5, 16. Offer hospitality to one another. 1 Peter 4, 9. And so that's just some of them that are there. Yeah. And as we look at some of these, some of these make sense in a, in a service context. Encourage one another. There's ways to do Don't that. Don't give each other a dirty look. That's, exactly, right? That's on there, be yeah. encouraging, right? <laughs> be in harmony with one another. Yeah, Don't yeah. be disturbing everybody in the service. But sure. when it comes to, say, uh, confess your sins to each other, when do we put that into the service? Yeah, right? we're going to... What, what portion of the service... I think we're going to do in the middle this week. In the middle? Should we'll we'll you put that middle. right yeah. in when the, the, the sermon is heaviest? Yeah, right at the, then the crux make, where it's like, what? That pause, pause, come up, tell us your sin. Yeah, yeah, we're going to start picking individuals out of the crowd. <laughs> Bring them up. It's time for your... Time for your your yeah. public confession. I, I won't be at church this Sunday. That's, uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> side note, exactly. Side note, right? yeah. So there, there's just some things that we're called to do here that don't fit within a programmatic for Sunday, Sunday morning, service. For sure, that yeah. doesn't degrade at all the importance and the necessity of the Sunday service. Just there are certain things that you can't do in a service. And so what we're getting at here is. These things are required to be done outside of the, that time that we have that service. Right. And so you've got to be intentional with how you're doing this. And so we've got a few things where this comes up. It yeah. comes up often in our different ministries. It comes up in community groups. 
How how do these things look in in our church and how? Right, and some of those Mark made, gave a list. I, he said you write this down. I just took a picture of my cell phone and I yeah, yeah. and then a couple other people did and sent it to me. I, that was great because uh, they're like, how did not use camera? So. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so there's obviously we can't do those in full on Sunday morning, mm -hmm. uh, and Mark very much pointed to that and talked about community groups and. And so some of these things are going to be found in community groups. Some are going to found, be found in Sunday school. Some are going to be found in going out and getting coffee with each other. Mark, yeah. Mark talked yeah. about that too, hanging around after church and, and catching up. Uh, we talked about the five-minute rule that Tina Cartrett would always talk about. You can't really, you're not really going to get to any serious deep stuff. Anything serious in less than you five that. minutes. That, yeah. you know, that's, a, that's a great way to look at that. Mm -hmm. great, it's very true. So there's other things that we do, and we, we do need to move beyond the Church is just Sunday morning kind of mentality. And most of us are beyond that. But then the practical side of that, I don't know if we've stepped into that yet. Like mm -hmm. We would agree mm -hmm. that that all can't be done Sunday morning, but then we wouldn't necessarily all agree that we need to do something about it. So what are the obstacles? That's one of the things we want to talk about. What are some of the obstacles? And what's the glue that holds together? So another thing that Mark talked a lot about is relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Relationships are where almost all of these things, I can't think of any actually, that it would not play out within relationships. Uh, if we're going to truly love one another, you're going to bear one another's burden. How, gonna, how can I bear your burden if I don't know anything about you? Right. <laughs> and I don't, if my only interaction with you is, I see you on the other side of the sanctuary yeah. once a week, but I come twice a month. <laughs> that's right. my only interaction with you. I know you exist, and I know yeah. you're a part of this, but that's all I know. And I can genuinely pray for you in that. Yeah. There's a sense of bearing the burden there, but it's not... The full level of what we're talking about. That's right. not, not all right. the way in. Uh, confess your sins to one another. I don't know if that was on there, but that's one of them I think it was. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not a requirement of salvation, by the way, or forgiveness. It's a, it's a uh, when we confess our sins to one another, we're, we're unloading that. We're, we're mm -hmm. being able to mm -hmm. pray for each other. We're, we're disarming the enemy in a lot of ways when we do that. Yeah, the enemy Man, wants to underrated. hold on to that and keep that stuff in the darkness. And so you're active bringing it to the light, yeah. takes away his power that, that he has over that. It's so underrated. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't, it, 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 we can't take that and go, oh, you have to confess your sins to Kyle. You have to confess your sins. To that's Nigel. That's not the point. It's right. really to each other so we can we can find forgiveness. There's we can strength that happens yeah. when you do that. So with that one, for instance, how are you going to confess your sins to one another if you're keeping everyone else at an arm's distance? Mm -hmm. More than that, at like a foot, a leg's distance, you know, you're just <laughs> right. and, and I like Heisman stiff arm there, right? Yeah. yeah, you can't do that, and mm -hmm. and the enemy wants to wants to do that too, but keep us from each other and and uh, lie to us and tell us it's not safe. So, so mm -hmm. that's part of what we want to talk about real quick, and then and then look at some of the elements of that. So, what stops us? This is the first question. What stops us from developing those kinds of relationships to where we can say, here's somebody who I I can share their burden or here's someone who I have this burden and I need someone to help me carry this. Who can I go to with that? If you can't think of anybody and, and your spouse counts, but you can't mm -hmm. say I'm done because I've got one, right? That's not what we mean. That's, yeah. Yeah. If you can't think of anybody, why is it? What's the reason? What, what's keeping us from those relationships? Yeah. So as we talked about it, we came up with two main things that come up over and over again. The first is priority. Is it a priority for you? Are you making it a high enough priority that you're going out to love one another? And then the second one is, it's really easy to hide. Yep. And there's a lot of motivation and there's a lot of reasons why people want to hide and not be close to one another, not be connected. So uh, first off about priorities is, when do you have to recognize how important this is? So when we think about, man, God loves me, that's awesome, and I'm going to the service and I'm, I'm doing that and I'm praying and praising Him, that's great. That's, that's fantastic. What he wants then in return also is to love one another the way that he loved us. Yeah. Right? And so we, we've talked about this before. He didn't hold anything back. He held nothing back in nothing. the way that he loved us. And so how, how can we match that if it's not a top priority in our lives? Where I am intentionally making this a priority and I'm going to make sure that I'm doing this on a regular basis. I'm loving people. And I'm going yeah. to be connected with people. And we've got to, we've got to, I think a lot of times in our minds, we have that filed under the, the things I'm supposed to do list or 
Mm -hmm. Well, Kyle and Nigel want me to do this because they want small groups to succeed, or they want me to go to Sunday school because they want to have a lot of people to teach. Like, that's not why we want you to do that. That's not why. That's not that's why. Not why. That is very. That is just not true. Do we want? It's not a duty. It's not about that at all. Yeah, it's not like uh, okay. The Lord's like Nigel. Look, if you don't have fifteen people in small group, then you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Like that's not. That's not what it is. <laughs> so glad it's not. So glad it's not. Fourteen. You're out. <laughs> oh man. Okay. So it's so close. So close. Okay. No grace right there. No grace. <laughs> We, we kind of can think of it that way. Oh, there's more things people want for me to do. Like, I get that. I, there's pull on our time. There's, there's work. There's family. There's sports. There's all these things that we try to mix in there. Some, some of them we put in for no reason. Some of those are in for some love. Of are some of good. those are some you're of them trying bad. to love. But are you loving the way that Christ has called you to love in the fullness of that? Right. So the relationships that we want to see developed aren't aren't so we can check a box it's because this is what the lord wants for us this is how he designed us he yeah. he designed us to work and operate in community and and we we can't just make it uh, a thing that we fit in the empty spaces like okay here are the important things mm -hmm. and then okay i'll fit in relationships or i'll fit in church stuff uh around the edges like that that yeah. doesn't that doesn't work and, and a lot of times we get frustrated with our walk with the Lord and with each other and why my church doesn't care about this or care about me here and there. And it's like, we didn't even know about that need. If we knew about that need, we would. Yeah. So and that, that we could go on about that. But my, my point is, it's, it, we want it to be a priority. We want these relationships to be a priority. Not, not for selfish reasons. Honestly, it's, it's because we, we can't operate the way that God wants us to operate as individuals or as a church if we aren't committed to one another. That's yeah. pretty much that simple. Uh, and yeah, and making it a priority. That's the priority thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the hiding part. Yeah, we yeah. So talk like to me to about hide. that. Talk to me why it's so easy. Yeah. to hide. it's so why it's so easy to hide. Well, because I think I think when we get and man, I'm, I have a superpower, and and that is um, <laughs> just one, just one superpower, just one, and uh, and that is I've got a lot of superpowers. <laughs> I don't have any. <laughs> he can fly. I can, you didn't know. Yeah, he can't that was land. part of the he, that was part of the interview process. He lands really hard, but he can he can fly. I started with that, and they were like, we we don't really care about superpowers here. <laughs> Yeah. We care more about humility. I was like, oh, okay, oh, I, need to, I'm I need to really do it humble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, the most like, humble person I know. My <laughs> superpower. My superpower is uh, I'm joking when I say this because it's a bad it's a bad thing. But I if I'm not careful, I I can very easily keep everybody at a distance. Like You too? Yeah, I'm not the only one, I'm sure. But I, I can like that's my de that. default. I have to I have to intentionally say no. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let people in, and I'm gonna go into the doors that I, that are open to me, and okay. and and uh, and I can operate for a long time uh, independently like that, and that's not what the Lord wants. So, uh, so why do we hide? I, th I think as we get closer to people in relationships, this is not a news flash. You're like Kyle. Anybody can make this video. Yeah, it's true. As we get closer to people in relationships, we make ourselves vulnerable, and that's a little scary. We don't really want to do that. Uh, we can't we can't have to learn to forgive one another if we don't get close enough to someone for them to hurt us, right? Like, like, that's a great solution. I'll do that. Like, that's <laughs> not that's yeah. not the the point either. So we like to hide. Uh, sometimes sometimes it's that we're hiding sin and we don't want it to be exposed. Sometimes it's that. Uh, other times it's we just we have this death grip on the way our life is and we want to own it. We want to we want to have it the way we want it. We want to be the kings of our own uh, life and domain and everything that we do is about us and. And we don't want to have to surrender anything. And the more I let other people in, the more I have to kind of do that. And then, oh man, if the Holy Spirit gets in here, he's really going to wreak havoc on my, my kingdom. And I don't <laughs> want that either. And, and so we hide from it. And then we become callous and, and on and on it goes. Yeah. Yeah. There's a mixing too of, of the priority issue as well. Because sometimes you don't want to let people get close because you're really busy. And, and the stuff that you're doing is really, really important. Yeah. Really, really important. Yeah. Uh, I got this thing that I'm doing that is so so important. Most of it's not. Just say that. Yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> is what you're doing that thing that is keeping you so busy that you want to hide and and get away from really having those five minute conversations? Plus, mm -hmm. is that thing really that important that it matches the level of loving people the way Christ loved us? That's the way to think right. about yeah. it. Yeah, is that's true. You you want to. You don't want to have your priorities so out of whack that, that you're trying to hide from doing the thing that is the most important 
and the most life-giving thing that you could do, to love the Lord and love other people. You don't want to hide from that. So uh, give us the next question. As yeah, another transition. question. Mark, Mark uh, sent this out to us this week. Uh, question, what changes can we make that will allow us to form deeper relationships with fellow Christians? This is a very practical way to think about it. So you go, okay, mm-hmm. here's why, where I am in that you know, category. Okay, am I stiff-arming people? Uh, right. Have I even opened the door? Do I even care about mm-hmm. building relationships? Where am I in that whole spectrum? You know, okay, I'm willing, do I think I'm doing it? Is. And uh, I evaluate myself and realize, whoa, whoa, I thought I was doing all I was supposed to be doing. I thought I was checking all the boxes, and I'm realizing I'm missing some of the core things, or I, was, or I wasn't even thinking about loving people from a place of my heart rather right. than by checking the boxes. So as you go through and evaluate yourself, take a look at yourself and, and really do some examination. How are you doing at loving people? Where are you succeeding? Where are you falling short? Where are you stiff arming? Where are you hiding? Where are you trying to avoid hurt? Yeah. Where are those things? And one practical, you know? one practical thing. So from that, then you go, well, I, okay, here's the places that I don't want to be vulnerable. And that's tough. That's not going to be a, okay, um, I thought about it, and now I'm mm-hmm. ready to just not be vulnerable. You know, or be vulnerable <laughs> now for everybody. Like, that's not, that's not it either. Yeah, yeah. It does take an act of the Lord in that. And we can also look at and go, well, okay, as far as priorities go, mm-hmm. Well, I've got I've got seven things that I got to do on this yeah. list, and they're all super important. And so I just don't have time to have coffee with one person at you know that I know from church. Or sometimes it's easy as going, these things are genuinely not important. Yeah, I need to make room in my life for things that God calls me to do that currently I don't want to do mm-hmm. or don't see as valuable. I had I had lunch with a friend yesterday. Uh, I drove up to uh, Maryland. A friend of mine uh, recently had lost his wife. And so I drove up there. It took two hours to get there. And uh, we had lunch for about three hours. And it took two and a half hours to get back because we live in Northern Virginia. Okay. <laughs> and so, so now f- for me, like that, th- that was, yesterday was my, was my day off. I went up there. Uh, I, I spent the day as much as I could with him. When I left, he said, Kyle, this I said, hey, this is a great, he's like, thanks for coming. I go, that was my day off, no problem, it was easy. He said, no, he goes, Kyle, this was the definition of ministry. This is what he said to me. And he gave me a huge hug, and he goes, you have ministered to me, and I desperately need it. This is, this is what he said to me. Like, what a blessing that was to hear, too. For me, it was just, no, this is important. This is a mm-hmm. friend of mine, he, he needs this. I, I want to be whatever I can be used of the Lord for him. Uh, so I, I made room for that. Now, that was easy for me. Mm-hmm. because he is important to me, right? And I was much of a blessing to me too. But those are kind of examples of like, I don't really have time to do this. It's going to take too long. And we're not even talking about the whole day. We're talking about like an hour at lunch or something or, or, or whatever it would be. Mm-hmm. So we have to kind of, a lot of times, the things that we think are the most important things in our day, mm-hmm. the Lord never asked us to do. That's just that simple. Yeah. He just didn't ask us to do. So that's just a practical thing. Yeah. You know what another practical thing could be? No. If you're having a hard time, if you're like, man, I don't know, I'm I'm, I'm trying to weigh things out, I'm not sure if I'm doing this right, you could ask somebody else how you're doing. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. Yes, yes, don't do that to me, (laughs) Nigel, don't do that to me. That's dangerous, that's that's horrifying, that would make me vulnerable. That's the point, that's the point. If you don't have anybody in your life that you could trust... That's a good indication that maybe you're not being close enough to people that you could really love them and, and receive love from them. Yeah. And if you do have somebody that, that you trust, it's great to get, it's hurtful, it, it's hard, it's painful oftentimes, it's difficult, but it's so good to get that feedback from somebody else. Another perspective, somebody that can see your life from a different angle, often it's your spouse, but even somebody else who can really speak in your life and say, Here's where I see you doing well. Here's where I see you. You could improve and go from there. So, but that's just a suggestion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the last, <laughs> just a suggestion. Yeah, that's that good. Just a suggestion. Just a, so, so another question we do want to hit here real quick, uh, and this kind of we'll kind of probably wrap up with this, but uh, and this again is from Mark. What role does loving other Christians play in making the body of Christ? Uh, grow and build itself up in love. And he gives us Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. Uh, so answering that question in light of Ephesians 4, which says, He gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, 
for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the Lord, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Shockingly, it's all about Jesus. Right, that's... Amazing. So what role... Where did uh, that come from? Didn't see it coming, yeah. <laughs> what role does loving others have? So when we talk about these things and building relationships and being vulnerable and loving one another well and bear, carrying burdens and all of that stuff, what... What role does that play outside of just you as an individual and even just us as Crossway? It's right. so much bigger than that. And, and so, uh, yeah, that's the question. What role does that have in, uh, in building up the body? There's two places it comes up. Uh, the first is that the speaking the truth in love in verse 15, right? So as we speak the truth in love, we are joined together, we grow together, and then at the end it says... That the whole body uh, grows as it builds itself up in love. Love is the catalyst. It's the, it's the growing mechanism that allows us to mature in Christ. Yeah, and it's the thing that makes us stand out from the world. Yes. It, I mean, yes. They, they'll know you are my disciples by this, that you love one another. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't fake that. You can, you can act like you love people for a short period of time, mm -hmm. but you can't, you can't fake it through real trials and real difficulties. Yeah. And so anyway, yeah, so that's what that's what holds us holds it together. And, and we can't be the church the way that God intended us to be the church mm -hmm. if we are not going to love each other. Yeah. It, it, we we become a a shell. We it, it's a counterfeit. Yeah. Um and then and then when we when we refuse to do that, our growth as individuals is immediately stunted. And then our growth as a church, and I don't mean just people, I mean our ability to impact the community, our, in, our ability to glorify God by living out the way that he wants us to, yeah. is, uh, is cut off and it's, it's, uh, it's stunted when we fail to love each other. Yeah. So one pitfall that I've seen in this, whole, in this whole realm would be people are trying to be mature, Christians are trying to be mature, they have an extra emphasis on truth. Mm -hmm. which is not a bad thing. I'm big on truth. It's huge. I'm yep. huge on truth. Yep. That's true. That and true. <laughs> that was horrible. <laughs> but I'm, I'm sorry for the pain on that one. Uh, but sometimes they, they're, they're trying to mature. They're trying to say, I'm not going to be caught by any wind of doctrine. I'm not going to be, you know, like I'm not going to be tossed to and fro like this is talking Don't about. Don't want to do that. Yeah. And the way to stay on that is to, is to be on the truth, right? Well, the way to think about it is, is kind of like a vine that's growing, and the truth is kind of like a trellis that allows the vine to grow the right direction, the right way. The problem is, truth isn't what makes growth happen in this passage. It's love that makes, here it is, right at the end, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. The, the mechanism that causes the growth, the maturity, that's going to help us to stand firm when, when we're attacked by Satan and what he's trying to do, it's going to be the love that causes us to grow. We want the truth to allow us to grow in the right directions, but the truth doesn't cause us to grow by itself. Right. It's speak the truth in love. You have to have both of them. Yeah, it's a both together. and, not an either, yes, not an either yes. or. And That's not degrading the truth at all, but it's just saying what the truth is able to do and what the truth is not able to do. Right. And love, whatever definition you have of that, that is... Uh, disconnected from truth is dangerous as well. As Super we dangerous. About yeah. Last week, and so you need to have them both. You need to have both operating together. Yeah, and and I think to wrap up, Mark, one of the Mark's uh, the two main points, two of the main points that he made uh, when we, we to love each other well, we're we're speaking the truth. I mean that that was right there as, yep. as the first thing he talked about. Yep. Uh, we have to speak the truth because that's what is loving, um, and then we do it in a way that is kind and gracious and, and humble. Uh, and then second is to make sure that we're believing correctly. That, that again, is attached to truth. Yeah. Uh, so, so can't downplay truth, but we, mm -hmm. we, can, we can have this, uh, this grip on truth, which we don't want to let go of, uh, 
and then use that to smash people <laughs> in love. Like that's yeah. not how it. That's not how it works. There's yeah. there's grace wrapped around that. Yeah. Uh, so um, yeah. So it's just just so many. There's so many facets to that. Uh, and I guess the the main thing that we would want you guys to think about coming out of that section of this sermon series of loving others is we got some practical things we could do. A lot of it starts though. A lot of it starts though with allowing yourself to be vulnerable, allowing yourself to develop those relationships, yeah. making room and space in your life uh, for God to guide and direct you in that. Uh, mm-hmm. And that can be scary. We, we totally get that. Not going not gonna to downplay that or pretend it's not true, mm-hmm. um, but it's worth it. It is absolutely worth it. And it's essential for our growth as individuals and our growth as a church. Absolutely. We love you guys. Thanks for watching Digging Deeper, and we'll see you guys soon.